Hey guys, Joe here with Sports Grid. Welcome to Pocket with Joe. We have 11 games on the slate, loaded slate today. Off three games yesterday, all of those games being able to go over the total, I was so glad we were on the right side of all of them. And those player props came in cashing nicely. Now we had to wait a couple of minutes, especially on Kopitar there. He was able to get the two plus points, pushing us to the plus 390 on his player props and that anytime goal of plus 300 with that last goal of his in that third period. We also had a big night with Ovi able to get the power play point and the goal for him. Um, Clayton Keller for the anytime goal as well. So it was a solid night out there on the ice. Let's get some more money today and let's look at these um, games. The first game we're going to kick off. I'm sorry. I'm a little distracted today. March Madness is going absolutely crazy. Let me know who already burst one of your brackets. BYU crushed me today. So not happy to see that. Good afternoon, Matt. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Appreciate each and every one of you guys. The first game we're going to look at here, the St. Louis Blues taking on the Ottawa Senators. Probably my least favorite game out there on the ice tonight with the St. Louis Blues coming in sixth in the Central. They are fighting for one of the Western Conference a wild card spots, so they're sitting on that bubble there. The Ottawa Senators sitting eighth in the Atlantic. Now, Forsberg will be getting the start for the Ottawa Senators here. And Hoffer coming in, Joe Hoffer, for the St. Louis Blues. Looking at the odds in this one, the St. Louis Blues are plus 112 here on the road. The Ottawa Senators at minus 134, total of six and a half. Seems like that is so far over my odd screen. Um, we're looking at that six and a half juice to the under at minus 122. And I understand the under in this one. And that is the way I would lean is the under in this game. Looking at both of these teams, especially the St. Louis Blues. I love what we've seen out of their defense as of late. They've been playing some strong hockey. Hoffer has a 2.76 goals against average and a 914 save percentage. And Ottawa went on that long run and they just weren't able to put up those goals. Now, looking at them here on the season, they do average that 3.13 and the St. Louis Blues averaging that 2.8 goals per game. We're seeing the Sens off that loss to the Boston Bruins where they allowed six goals to come in. But I do think in this one, because St. Louis isn't a hugely explosive team offensively, we could even see a 4-2 style win here for the St. Louis Blues, even in this one stay under that total of six and a half. I just think it's too high. I don't love the Sens schedule here. They've gone road home, road home for their last five games. So it has been hard. And when we look at the St. Louis Blues, they've won seven of the last 10 meetings versus the Ottawa Senators, including in December when they won that one, four to two. That was in St. Louis, though. So I can't trust the Senators, eight or sorry, three, eight and one in their last 12 games. They did go on that streak for a while, but I think this is one where the St. Louis Blues, the plus money on them, especially off that loss to the Colorado Avalanche, where we did see a really strong performance still out of them. They went four and three on Tuesday versus the Avs. So able to still put up those three goals. They had won their four games prior. So I think St. Louis is a team to be on here and you're getting plus money. Yeah, it was a good night last night. So hopefully you guys are cashed in those games. Lots of action on the slate. Yeah, all over is cashed last night. Both teams a little tired, but St. Louis in better form. I completely agree with you, Doug. You took the words right out of my mouth. So St. Louis just playing the better hockey. Let's look at the next game here. And I'm expecting a really tight battle between these two. We have uh, the New York Rangers taking on the Boston Bruins. Now, Jonathan Quick is confirmed in goal for the New York Rangers and the Boston Bruins starting Swayman. Now, Swayman's been strong, and I know it's not all Mark, so don't get concerned here. Swayman has been able to record the win in five of the last six times he's come out for the Boston Bruins. And then Quick has been phenomenally strong as well, especially versus the Bruins in his career. So just quick look at the lines on this one. The New York Rangers at plus 126. You know how attractive that plus money is for me on a team like the New York Rangers. They are missing two of their top defensemen in today's matchup. One is on suspension. The other one is injured. Um, but I do think Adam Fox can step up and fill a big void in this game today. We know how strong Adam Fox is for the New York Rangers. Looking at the Boston Bruins, they're minus 152 here on the money line at home, which is actually a pretty fair price for the Boston Bruins. We know normally we have to lay a lot of juice. I do think this should, if, if the Rangers had their 
two defensemen in. I would think this line would be a bit tighter. I think we're having to lay uh, probably 10 more cents on the Bruins because of that. But that total of 5.5 minus 124 to the over and plus 102 to the over. Or sorry, to the under. Plus 102 to the under. Jonathan Quick versus the Boston Bruins in his career has gone 12, 6, and 1. Phenomenal numbers in those 19 games. He has a goals against average of 2.43 and a 918 save percentage. His save shots on goal tonight, the number is coming in at 26 and a half, and I will be taking that to the over. It's minus 110 for Jonathan Quick, over 26 and a half save shots. And then when we look at the Boston Bruins with Swayman here, he has a number 27 and a half for his save shots on goal tonight. I do think he can go over this number as well. I expect this to be a goaltending battle out there on the ice. Whichever goaltender stands taller in net will record the win. So when we look at Swayman versus the New York Rangers, 2-2-1 two, two, and one, in those five games that he has faced the Rangers in his career, a goals against average number that's absolutely elite at 1.58, a save percentage of 9.45. So Swayman does have the edge, but... Way less games here. Five games versus the Rangers versus Jonathan Quick has played 19 games versus the Boston Bruins. I'm going to look at a couple of things in this one. I expect defensive playoff style hockey between these two teams. We have the New York Rangers here in the Metro and the Boston Bruins in the Atlantic. Now they've got the Boston Bruins only have 12 games remaining to hold on to this first place in the Atlantic. It's going to be hard for them. They need to record every win. I expect these defenses to be tight coming right out of the gate. The zero goals in the first period really interests me for the value here. That's coming in at plus 340. If you think one of these teams is going to score, and we know how strong offensively both of these teams are, but I expect that first period to be a clamp down for goaltending and defenses and them not to allow those goals to come in. If you do think one goal can come in, that's at plus 195 for one goal in the first period. Zero goals is plus 340. One goal is plus 195. I really can't see this one opening up and being a two goal first period. I think I will put a half unit on zero goals and a half unit on one goal at plus 195. That is more of long shot bets there, you guys. I do think the no goal in the first 10 minutes holds so much weight in this game. That's coming in at plus 110. You could also look at that first period under one and a half at minus 112. So all of these bets kind of go hand in hand. All four of these bets could just be thrown out the window in a second with one of these teams coming out scoring quick with one of these goaltenders kind of sleeping going into this one. So they shouldn't be. This should be playoff style hockey. But all of my bets kind of coincide with each other. Same with the goalie props to the over. We have seen these teams tighten up on defense and get those block shots. So the numbers are getting pretty tight with these safe shots on goals for those goaltenders, because in some of these games, the defenses aren't allowing those shots to come in. But we look at the offensive firepower on both sides. I do think they'll get around the defenses enough to go over both of their safe shots on goal. If there was one goaltender I was relying on more than the other, it would be Jonathan Quick just because his number is only at 26 and a half at minus 110. You look at Swayman here, you've got to go to 27 and a half. You're going to lay juice at minus 118. So you're laying more juice. You got to get an extra shot on him in this one. So I would lean on Jonathan Quick if you're just looking for one of these goaltenders. Now, because I'm liking this to be a low, low scoring game, I'm not going to play player props in this one. But if you do want to look at some player props, Pasternick got his second hat track of the season in his last game out for the anytime goal. Pasternick is coming in at minus 105 for the Boston Bruins. He's been absolutely phenomenal. And then Panarin here for the New York Rangers, his anytime goal coming in at plus 195. So that is who I would go with if your book can get those block shots on goal props. Adam Fox to the over. Adam Fox over two and a half block shots. Adam Fox over three and a half block shots. Whatever they are offering for plus money, I would be taking on Adam Fox because he does need to step up tonight. Rangers on the money line. I'm with you. It's the Rangers with that plus money. You got to look at them there. They have been playing a lot of games. That is for sure. But this Rangers team is rolling really hot right now. I can't go against them. Jimmy, I'm glad you had a great night last night. That's what I love to hear. 
over for Shen, the money line for the Oilers and McDavid, one plus points, plus 175. Nice parlay there. I like where you're going with that one. Um, I am cautious about Edmonton, though, tonight. You guys know, sometimes I get cautious about the Edmonton Oilers. The Philadelphia Flyers and the Carolina Hurricanes is our next game. 7 o'clock Eastern for this one as well. The Flyers at plus 210. The Carolina Hurricanes at minus 260. Total 5.5. Five and a half juice to the over at minus 134. The under five and a half is plus 110. And I do think this one has the opportunity of staying under that number. I'm going to look at this one to stay under five and a half and get that plus money. No goals in the first 10 minutes is going to be an also another play of mine here that's coming in at plus 120. This is a hard game to find value. It's a battle of the Metro here in Carolina. I do understand is the stronger team, but you do have the Flyers fighting here. They're sitting third in the Metro. Urgent is off a game in which he played phenomenal versus the Toronto Maple Leafs. They were able to record the win versus the Leafs, winning that 4-3 to three in their last game. And Urshan needed that game because he was struggling, and he's been struggling this month. In that game, he stopped 27 of 30 shots on goal, so we needed him to get there. His safe shots on goal prop is 27 and a half, and I'm going to take it to the over today. That's coming in at minus 130. You look at the Carolina Hurricanes, we know how strong this team is. They've been racking up the goals, and for the Flyers to play a tight game here with the Canes, Urgent is going to have to stand tall in this one. So I like his ability to do so. We have Anderson in net for the Carolina Hurricanes in this one. So odds on this minus... Uh, one and a half for the Carolina Hurricanes is plus 100, plus one and a half for the Flyers is minus 120. I'm not going to take a side at all in this one. We look at this. The Carolina Hurricanes have won nine of the last 10 meetings. Fourth meeting here of the season between these two Carolinas, one, two of the three. I can see Carolina getting the win, but I'm just not loving the value that we're getting on Carolina, even the minus one and a half on the puck line. If you would look at Carolina at some point, I would look at them first period puck line here for the Carolina Hurricanes. Again, I'm not going to bet it. I expect goaltending to be strong in that first period and defense. We look here at the defense of the Philadelphia Flyers. They are limiting opponents to 27.8 shots on goal per game. That is third best overall in the league. Their kill is strong as well at 84.5%. When we look at Carolina, we know this team is the best in the league at limiting those shots on a net. We're going to start seeing these teams get more block shots as we go deeper into the playoffs as well. So 25.8 is how many shots the Carolina Hurricanes allow. They also kill at the second best overall in the league at 85.8%. So their kills are really close here between these two. I am expecting this one to start off slow. Give me the no goals in the first 10 minutes at plus 120. Urgent better stand on his head. I'm taking him over 27 and a half save shots because even though the Flyers defense is so good at getting those block shots, limiting their opponent's ability to get those shots. Carolina has been a force on the offensive side of the puck. They're averaging 32.9 shots on goal per game. Their power play is clicking at 26.4%. And in the last four games, they have been scoring these goals. In the last four and seven of the last eight, they scored four or more goals in each of those games. So this is going to be a hard team. For the Flyers to shut down and contain in this one, but I do expect them to have some success in here. So the under five and a half, no goal in the first 10 minutes at plus 120, and urgent over his save total. Nice boost. Edmonton win assist. Okay. I can see where you're going with that one. Bet 365. I'm just not sure I'm sold on Edmonton today, but if they're able to get that win, I think both of those can hit um, for you. And if you're getting that nice boost, Carolina, tired team, but so intense. Yeah, I do lean on Carolina, should be able to get the win. I'm not brave enough to take the Flyers straight up to get the win, but you also look at where the bets are going. Everyone is on Carolina. Try to find me a person that's taking the Flyers on the money line today. It makes me want to put a couple dollars at least on the Flyers at two to one for my money for them to be able to pull off the upset. It's a lot to ask, though, for the Flyers to pull off the upset here, but you know they're going to be hungry to do so. They've done so already once this season.
The next game, we have the New York Islanders taking on the Detroit Red Wings. The Islanders coming in here on the road as a favorite at minus 120. The Detroit Red Wings at plus 100. This total is juiced to the under 6.5 at minus 128, plus 104 to the over here. Sorokin versus James Reamer. And you guys know my faith in, sorry, my kids are playing music or something. Let me just shut my door here. Um, you know my faith in Sorokin. I do have a lot of faith in him. He hasn't just looked like himself, especially on the road. He's got a 3.03 goals against average and a 908 save percentage on the season. Now, James Reamer coming in here with a 2.98 and a 907. This is a pivotal game in the Eastern Conference between these two, both of these teams trying to get the win. We have the Islanders sitting fifth in the Metro, and we have the Red Wings sitting fifth in the Atlantic. They're three points ahead of the Islanders right now for that wild card spot. The Islanders are coming in here. They've lost their last five. Tuesday night, they lost to the Carolina Hurricanes. Thankfully, we still went under that total of five and a half in that one. Canes put up four goals. The Islanders were only able to answer back with one. The Islanders have scored just six goals during this losing streak that they've been on of their last five games. So looking at this one here, will we see the Islanders be able to score on James Reamer? I don't know. We look at the Red Wings. This team is strong offensively. But they go over in the first period on the over one and a half. I don't think we will see Sorokin allow two goals in the first period. I'm looking at this first period to be super tight between these two. Like I said, this means so much between these teams as they battle it out in the Eastern Conference. So I'm going to do a couple things with this one. I'm going to look at the under one and a half in the first period. Like I said, the Islanders are not scoring as of late. I do think even though Sorokin has been shaky in some of these games, this game is so important. We'll see Patrick Waugh make this defense lock down in this one. So no goals in the first period. If you take an exact score, 0-0 zero, zero tied in that first period, it's coming in at plus 410. You guys know I already put some money on that. I really do think these teams can't get into a shootout between each other. I don't think either team will want to do so. First period, under one and a half, as well at minus 128. Again, both of those bets uh, pair nicely together. I think the value on the Red Wings here at home is there. They're off the overtime win versus the Columbus Blue Jackets on Tuesday, 4-3. to three. They have a road trip on deck on Saturday, the Preds, the Capitals, the Canes, the Panthers, and then the Lightning. They have the playmakers. Dylan Larkin still listed day-to-day. -day. If Dylan Larkin is all of a sudden in the lineup and these lines move, you guys, the, the Red Wings should get the win if Larkin gets back out on the ice. And then I would be looking at this one to go over that full total first period i think stays under i could see the game going over at the end because again we've got a total of six and a half this first period i'm going to be live betting the total after the first period i really do think if we get out of that first period zero zero we'll see this total drop to five and a half maybe even four and a half Ugh, that's going to be a lot to ask would have to get into the second period probably 10 minutes into that second period still scoreless seeing this total drop at that point, I will hit it to the over. So I do recommend at some point when this total drops to a four and a half, hitting it to the over. This could finish 3-2 in this one. This could finish 3-2 in OT. It's going to be an absolute battle. I won't be betting player props because I do think low scoring games, I hate hitting those player props, but I will give you who I would look at. Bo Horvat here for the New York Islanders is plus 170. I would take a long shot on someone like Noah Dobson here for the Islanders. He's coming in at plus 600. Patrick Kane, we know you circle him for the Red Wings. He's plus 180. If Dylan Larkin gets back out on this ice, if you're seeing player props for him, I would definitely look at Larkin. He provides that strength up the middle as well um, that the Red Wings have just been missing without him. Uh, Perrin, David Perrin here for the Red Wings as well would be my other. He'd be the longer shot at plus 380 to be able to get that anytime goal. But playoff style hockey here as these two battle it out for a wild card spot, you guys. It's going to be epic hockey. Give me the under one and a half in the first period at minus 128. Tied first period, 0-0, zero, zero, plus 410. You know that's the bet I want to hit tonight.
Thanks, Kev. I appreciate you guys. Happy Thursday, everyone. I appreciate everyone for being here. That is for sure. Again, both teams, four and six and five. It's Islanders could get a sneaky win. I completely see where you're going with the Islanders. And I do think at some point this one goes over that total. I'm just not willing to bite on an over for a six and a half. That is for sure. Between these two, especially with the lack of scoring, the Islanders have been able um, to do as a light. Let's look at the next game here. The Winnipeg Jets, they're in action tonight. They're in New Jersey. Take on the New Jersey Devils. I'm excited. Tyler Toffoli versus his former team in this one. The New York, or sorry, the New Jersey Devils coming in at plus 112. The Winnipeg Jets at minus 134. The total is six and a half. Minus 128 to the under, plus 104 to the over. Boussois will be in net for the Winnipeg Jets tonight and not Connor Hellebuck. I don't care. Boussois has been absolute fire. Look at his numbers. Boussois is a 1.99 goals against average and a 9.27 save percentage. So Boussois here on the road versus Devils, I'm not worried about. Then we have Jake Allen. You guys know my skepticism of Jake Allen when he was with Montreal. It was like his heart wasn't in the game. His heart's been completely in the game since joining the New York Rangers. You look at the goals that he's allowed. So since joining the New York um, New York Rangers, I, why do I keep saying that? The New Jersey Devils. Since joining the Devils here, he's only allowed two goals in each of his starts. So he allowed two goals in his last game versus the Pittsburgh Penguins, he saved 36 shots on net. He saved 34 versus Vegas and 35 versus the Stars. So you've got the Pittsburgh Penguins, the Vegas Golden Knights, and the Dallas Stars. He has been able to limit both all three of those teams to only two goals. I love what we've seen out of him since he's been with the Devils. He's been fire. Now, the Devils are sitting six in the Metro, and this line is fishy, fishy as hell. We earlier in the month here, we bet the Devils because the line didn't look right. And I think this is another, this line doesn't look right. Why are the Winnipeg Jets only minus 134 favorites coming into New Jersey? The New Jersey Devils are plus 112. That total, I would lean to the under six and a half in this one. I do think Tyler Toffoli will have success versus his former team in this game. So Tyler Toffoli for two plus points is plus 330 or the anytime goal at plus 185. Now, Timo Meyer has been extremely successful as of late. His goals coming in at plus 175. His two plus points at plus 340. If you just want, or sorry, yeah, two plus points at plus 340. His one plus point is minus 138. So you'll have to lay juice on the one point but I do think the two plus points could come in. So even though we've got insane goaltending on both sides and I am leaning under, I can't pass up on the value on both Tyler Toffoli and Timo Meyer for their two plus points in this game. I think one of these players is able to cash it. Like I said, the devil's line looks fishy. I would have thought the Winnipeg Jets would roll in here as bigger favorites. They won their last three, three games. They had a big win on Tuesday. Um, four to two, and they won 14 of their last 19 games. They're sitting first in the central and this team right now is fighting as well for the president's cup. Now looking at the New Jersey devils, they're coming off the win versus the pens. That was a big win for them. Five to two in that they're fighting. They're sitting on the bubble of a wild card spot. I just, Something doesn't sit right. I'm willing to put a little bit of money on the New Jersey Devils in this one. This is the third game on the road here for the Winnipeg Jets of a five-game road trip. The Islanders and the Caps are on Saturday and Sunday, so they are going into back-to-back -back nights on this weekend. If you're looking for anyone else other than Tyler Toffoli of the Winnipeg Jets, it should be Kyle Connor for that anytime goal at plus 185. He's had a goal in the last three games. So the value is there for Kyle Connor to get the gold tonight. The under six and a half, I really do think this game. While it does have the possibility of going to OT and that will ruin us going under the total. I think it will be a three, two style game in this one for the winner. So I have more faith in the Winnipeg Jets, but the line looks fishy. So that's why I would be taking the Devils before the Jets. It's just too good of a price.
Maybe the Jets mail it in tonight. I know, and that's what I'm looking at. Third game on the road of a five-game road trip. They've been rolling completely hot, winning their last three off that big win, four to two. We could see the Jets mail this one in, the Devils get the win. So I think it's worth a sprinkle. Okay, next game on here, we have the Nashville Predators, and the Nashville Predators are in action in Florida. To take on the Florida Panthers, you guys, this is going to be a heck of a game. This is a game I have circled. This is a game that's going to be on my TV. Lankan will be in net and not Saros here for the Nashville Predators. Now, he has a 309 goals against average and an 897 save percentage. Last game versus the Columbus Blue Jackets, he stood on his head. He saved 32 of 33 shots on goal. I was looking for his shots on goal prop, and we'll have another look here because I couldn't find it before we kicked off. Bobrovsky will be a net for the Florida Panthers as Bobrovsky. He's got a 2.35 goals against average and a 9.16 save percentage. He has been playing absolutely phenomenal. Now, the Florida Panthers coming in at minus 184, plus 152 on the Nashville Predators, total six and a half. You're going to have to lay the juice to the under six and a half at minus 134. You get plus 110 if it goes over that total. We look at the Predators here and how phenomenally hot this team is, and I cannot believe the run they're on. They're fourth in the Central. They lead the Western Conference wildcard race, so they're holding on to it right now. They've won their last three games, and the last game being versus the Sharks. They blew up the Sharks 8-2 to two on Tuesday. Now they also have gone 13-2 and two in their last 15 games, both losses in those two games of the 15 have come in overtime. So they have got a point in every single one of their last 15 games. It's phenomenal what they're doing here. The value on the Predators in this one versus the Florida Panthers is too much for me to pass up. It was plus 154 earlier in the day. It's plus 141. Oh, it's plus 152 right now. We're getting more value than I got earlier. I think it's the Preds that can pull off this upset. Now, the Florida Panthers have lost their last two straight. This team, I love what we've seen out of them. They're sitting second in the Atlantic. The Boston Bruins just took back that first spot in the Atlantic. They lost to Carolina 4-0 and at home as well to the Tampa Bay Lightning 5-3 in their last game. You're telling me that they lost 5-3 to the Tampa Bay Lightning and the Preds are plus 152 dogs coming in with them winning 13 of their last 15 games and two losses were in OT. Give me the Predators with this plus money all day long. I do think this one, this is another game I'm going to live bet. I think it stays under that total, but I expect one of these teams to come out here and explode offensively in that first period, them getting all of those shots on goal. The Nashville Predators, I expect probably to be the team to do so because they know they need to come out and try to get into more of a shootout style game. And while this team is able to limit opponents on the defensive side, I don't think it's a recipe for them to win in this one, just with how hot this offense has been rolling. So I lean to the under, but I am looking for that goal in the first five minutes and then for things to really tighten up after that. The goal in the first five minutes is coming in at plus 170. I do think the first period probably stays still under that one and a half, but we get that really quick goal as one of these goals. Goaltenders allow an easy one in a little bit of puck luck for one of these teams. It could be the Florida Panthers here as well, because we know how strong the Florida Panthers can come out right out of the gate. It was a bet that we've been riding lots this season, the Florida Panthers on the puck line in the first period or for Florida to score first. So um, in this one, I just have to look here at the goal in the first five minutes. And then if this total, the juice comes down, on the under six and a half, that's when I want to hit it because they really realistically think it stays under the six and a half. I think this could be a 4-2 win for one of these teams with that empty netter coming into play. But minus 134, I don't love the juice. So because I think a quick goal, we're going to have that juice drop or that line move. I would doubtful we'll see it go up to seven, but the juice at least will drop off the minus 134. I want to see this at like minus 110 or some plus money to the under, especially if we get that goal in the first like 30 seconds like we've seen in some of these games. Now, Sam Reinhart on the power play for the Florida Panthers has been absolutely phenomenal. He has seven 
for 27 power play goals on the season for his power play point tonight. That's coming in at plus 190. And the National Predators don't want to get in the box because their kills only um, stopping 76.4% of their opponent's power plays. And the power play here for the Florida Panthers is so phenomenally strong at 26.4%. So if the Preds get in the box, look for Sam Reinhart to be able to get that power play point. I love the value we're getting on him for the power play point at plus 190. Now, there is a couple of defensemen out here for the Florida Panthers as well, including Eckblade out for injury. So I do think the Preds have every opportunity to be able to capitalize on that. Now, you'll see here the a defensive player for the Predators has been so strong now. He was able to get the Norris tro Trophy for a defenseman back in 2020. He's been having an elite season here. His point tonight's coming in at minus 136. His assistant minus 106. All of his points, basically the majority of his points, do come in the way of assists. So I do like that assist tonight at minus 106. But if you want to play it safer, you could just look at that point at minus 136. It's going to be a fantastic game out there, you guys. You're agreeing. Florida bounce back four days off. Nashville is so hot. I lean on the Predators. I lean on the Predators as well. Okay, next game here, you guys. The Buffalo Sabres, the Edmonton Oilers. I know a lot of you have been talking about taking Edmonton straight up on the money line. This is when Edmonton loves to pull a big Laws. I don't know. I can't trust them versus the Buffalo Sabres. We know the Buffalo Sabres already beat them in OT. And I do think Edmonton will be looking for payback. Sorry, this Oregon game keeps distracting me here. Oregon's up over the Gamecocks. So that's good to see. Um, Edmonton's minus 235 on the money line, plus 190 here for the Buffalo Sabres, a team that just beat them. We're getting a total six and a half, minus 130 to the under, and plus 106 to the over in this matchup. There's too much value on the Sabres for me on the puck line. Plus one and a half on the Sabres is minus 128. I have to hit on that. And if I'm taking a team on the puck line, you know I'm going to sprinkle on that money line. Now that money line at plus 190. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a half unit on the Buffalo Sabres plus one and a half and a half unit on the money line at plus 190. Do I risk losing both of these? Absolutely. But I do think I still can't trust Skinner and Lykingen in net for... Um, the Sabres here has been so hot in some of these games and Skinner has been as well. And I give him all the credit in the world, but it's not a team that I can trust. So the Sabres won the last. They never stopped fighting in these games and they're able to make those comebacks. The last meeting versus Edmonton, they were able to make that comeback. They were down. So if you want to wait until Edmonton scores first, it's a really solid way to go because they also did that versus Vancouver and they tried to fight their way back and they almost were able to come back versus Vancouver. Now they're fighting for that wild card spot in the Eastern Conference. You guys, they're five points back. So they need this win. And then we look here at the Edmonton Oilers. They are five points ahead of the LA Kings. They're sitting six or sorry, second in the Pacific. I wish Edmonton was sitting sixth in the Pacific. There is my Calgary fan in me, but I do think this is one where the Sabres, I can't pass up on the value. And I will, let's wait. Let's wait for that money line. I don't think the Sabres score first. I think Edmonton comes out, scores first in this game. And then the Sabres have a fight back win. They have the heart here. They're not giving up. Now this is game four on the road for them. They have Sunday in Calgary to finish off this road trip. This is their fourth game in six nights, all on the road as well. So it's a hard spot for the Buffalo Sabres. So even if Edmonton gets up to, I'm not worried at coming back with the Buffalo Sabres, even on that puck line plus two and a half or whatever value you're going to get on the money line for a little sprinkle. You look at Rasmus Dahlin, listening to him talk after these games about the fight and how they might be on the bubble, but they're going to fight to the very end. It just inspires you to really root for teams like this. For the point for Rasmus Dahlin tonight, he's coming in at minus 138. Now, Tag Thompson has been phenomenally strong for the Buffalo Sabres as well. His anytime goal at plus 
230. I almost lean more to Jeff Skinner coming in here. He's coming in at plus 320 for the Buffalo Sabres. Now, Evan Bouchard has been phenomenal for Edmonton. He's had five points in his last four games, all of those coming in the way of assists. You're going to have to lay the juice for his assist tonight, but I do think that assist is coming at minus 122. So it's going to be a great game. The Sabres have won three of the last five, including on March 9th. So that was the last game, three to two. And it was actually a shootout. It wasn't just in overtime. The Sabres were able to get that win. So let's go Sabres. I want that plus money. Next game, we have Chicago Blackhawks taking on the Anaheim Ducks. Who is excited for this game? Hands up if you're excited. I'm excited to make some money. I do think there's an opportunity, and I'm just going to see what the current lines are in this one. Chicago coming in at plus 104. The Anaheim Ducks at minus 125. Total six and a half, juice to the under at minus 130 because no one can seem to score. Plus 106 to the over in this. Chicago lost that last game to the LA Kings six to two. And yeah, the, the Kings locked down on the defensive side of the puck and those goals came piling in by them. The Ducks have lost their last seven, but they're the favorite in this. Another fishy as heck line. I would not sit here and tell you to take the Ducks at minus 125 when they've lost their last seven. They got shut out by the Minnesota Wild 4 to nothing on Tuesday at home. They've been shut out in three of their last four outings. How can I put minus 125 money on the Anaheim Ducks? I'm not putting my money on them at all. Now, when we look at the Chicago Blackhawks, they have won both meetings this season, and both of them were at home versus the Anaheim Ducks. So they're able to win earlier in March, just on the 12th, so less than 10 days ago. They won that one 7-2, to two, and then in December, one to nothing. I'm going to look at this first period to go over 1.5. That's coming in at minus 112. Peter Morazic versus John Gibson um, expected at least in net. We know the Ducks haven't been scoring those goals, so I'm hoping Chicago comes out and gets two quick goals in this one because I can't count on the Ducks. But I do think the Blackhawks still been allowing those goals to come in. And Leo Carlson out there for the Ducks. I do have faith in him tonight. You're looking at him for that anytime goal at plus 290. I think there's value there. But my main focus will be on the Chicago Blackhawks and what I'm thinking this team is going to be able to do because I just have more faith in them. So they are the dog coming into this. I don't want to put my money on them straight up. But I do think the first period over one and a half. I'm also looking at Connor Bedard for the anytime goal. You know we have to circle him. He's coming in at plus 150. Two plus points for Connor Bedard, which he has proven that he can get versus his team. That's coming in at plus four or plus 240 here. He's had four goals and 13 points in his last seven games out there on the ice. The last game versus the Anaheim Ducks, he was able to get five shots on goal, four assists, five goals, so five points in that one. He racked up those points. And then we can get him for two-plus points tonight at plus 240. Sign me up all day long. If you want to ladder that up and take the three-plus points, four-plus points, I wouldn't blame you. I probably will end up doing so. So the Ducks have been held to two or less goals in their last nine games. Games. I know Chicago's defense isn't that strong, but come on. I just, I look at the Ducks and they are playing dead in the water. They've only had one power play goal in their last 10 games. This team spends a lot of time in the penalty box as well. So I can't trust them here. And then on that kill, they're allowing their opponents to just score on them like crazy. They've allowed 15 power play goals in the last seven meetings, including four the last time they faced Chicago. So if you want to look at Connor Bedard for the power play point as well, it would be a good one to go on. Okay, no Morazic tonight. I agree with you without Morazic, and I would look at that over as well. Can we get Connor Bedard for the hat trick? We could absolutely get him for a hat trick as well. Next game, we have the Montreal Canadiens taking on the Vancouver Canucks. Now, Montreal coming in here at plus 220, Vancouver at minus 275, total of six and a half, plus 100 to the over and minus 122 to the under in this one. Puck line odds because can't bet, well, unless you like Montreal straight up. And Montreal off a fantastic game, don't forget, versus Edmonton. Montreal plus one and a half at minus 106 and Vancouver minus one and a half at minus 113. 
Sam Montague has been up and down this season. He's got a 3.10 goals against average and a 905 save percentage. He was so solid versus Edmonton. I felt so bad for him in that game because in overtime, Edmonton was on the power play and he was playing absolutely fantastic when they had, when Edmonton had the one man advantage, the shots raining in on him were absolute fire. And Edmonton was able to score with like 20 seconds left in um, overtime in that power play. So uh, Montreal had every opportunity to win, and it was because of Sam Montreal. Now, Casey DeSmith is in net for the Vancouver Canucks tonight. DeSmith has allowed two goals or less in four of his last five appearances, so we have to give him credit there. He has been playing some strong hockey. He's been getting the support from his defense, but the power play hasn't been clicking here for the Vancouver Canucks, and it's something that they keep talking about, how it's not connecting. They're just not able to score on the plow power play and we're also getting news Demko is going to be out the next couple of weeks so will he hit the road with them when they go back and face Vegas I am not sure if he's even going to be ready at that point so uh we'll see Vancouver face Calgary on Saturday the Kings on Monday so the Kings game definitely a hard one um up ahead now they've won for the last five versus Montreal, including in November in Montreal. They got a big 5-2 to two win. But I do think the heart that Montreal is playing with right now, I can't turn them down at plus 1.5 on that puck line at minus 102. They've just been playing some strong hockey. And yes, they are going to be tired coming into this one. So maybe the puck line in the first period might be a better way to look in this game. It's not my favorite one for betting here as Montreal is sitting 7th in the Atlantic. Their head coach is out but they do have another coach that has stepped in he's out with family um issues so the heart this team's playing with nick suzuki has been absolutely phenomenal and cole caulfield i look at both of those uh players for those anytime goals and then you also look at how montreal's played even though they've had these losses so two of their last three games they've been able to push their opponents to ot the bruins they had the overtime loss two to one and the oilers the overtime loss three to two so i like what we've been able to see out of this team on the defensive and goaltending side as well as offensively and how they've been playing. I do lean though for this one to stay under that total because I look at the Vancouver Canucks and how strong this team can be. And with Casey DeSmith really limiting their opponents as of late, I do think this is probably an under game. So the under six and a half laying the juice, I don't hate in this game. Yeah, good coaching as well. And I wish the coach all the best as well. It's a hard situation for sure. Okay, the next game, we have the Seattle Kraken taking on the Vegas Golden Knights. Now, lines on this one right now, the Seattle Kraken coming in at plus 155 and minus 188 here for the Vegas Golden Knights. We have a total of five and a half at minus 122 to the over and plus 100 to the under. So finally an under that we're um, getting some positive money because, you know, all of these unders have been laying juice, but I can't take this full game to the over or under. All I'm going to do is isolate Vegas here. I don't like what we've seen out of the crack and they've lost all of their last five games. All of those have been at home. So yes, a change of venue is good. And I know Vegas hasn't been protecting their fortress as of late. They they're off that loss versus the Tampa Bay lightning five to three on Tuesday. And they've lost six of the last nine. So could Seattle come in here and pull off an upset? Oh, it's too much to ask for me. I can't see the Kraken being able to do it, but that change of scenery is a real positive for some of these teams when they're on these losing streaks. I think either way, Vegas gets those goals. Give me the over for Vegas's team total, over three and a half coming in at plus 102. I also like Vegas in regulation. I can't see the Kraken pushing them to OT in this one. Vegas in regulation coming in at minus 120. They need to bounce back. They need to grind this one out. They they need to go on a late season um, run here to be able to uh, get a wild card spot. They're sitting fourth in the Pacific. So this is a team that won last season, won it all, and we're sitting here fourth in the Pacific fighting to hold on to a Western Conference wild card spot. We have uh, the Seattle Kraken, six in the Pacific, 11 points behind Vegas for the final wild card spot in the Western Conference. 15 games remaining, 30 points up for grabs. There's no way. I 
I look at the Seattle Kraken and while they might have hope for me, the Seattle Kraken have no hope. And I'm sorry to all Kraken fans out there, but I just can't get behind them. Um, Vince Dunn, still day to day. Jordan Swartz, day to day. Jordan Eberle, though, you can look at him for four plus shots on goal. I think that's a nice bet to take if you're looking to bet something for the Kraken. His four plus shots on goals coming in at plus 240. He had four shots in the last game. He was limited to three in the game. Uh, the game prior, but he did have four shots versus the Winnipeg Jets. We know how strong that defense is. And he had four shots in the uh, games prior, one of those versus Calgary. So I think Jordan Neverly for four plus shots on goal makes sense at plus 240. You could take him down to three plus shots on goal and lay a little bit of juice. I do still think because Vegas's defense sometimes allows their opponents to really come out and get those shots. You could also look at Jared McCann here. Jared McCann coming in for four blast shots on goal at plus 168. He had four shots in his last uh, two games. So I would look at Seattle for the shots on goal. I'm not looking at them for any of those goals. William Carlson for his points tonight does interest me for the Vegas Golden Knights. The last meeting. William Carlson versus uh, Seattle had a goal and an assist and four shots on goal. So I do think we can see a strong performance out of him tonight. So his points coming in, one plus, two plus points. And then Jack Eichel for his points. Uh, last meeting, Jack Eichel had a goal and two assists. So Jack Eichel for the two plus points definitely is circled on my card, you guys. Vegas needs this win way too bad for them to let the Golden Knights win this one. Vegas in reg, again, minus 120. Vegas's team total over three and a half at plus 102. The last game on the board, San Jose thrown in the towel. I hope so. I'm counting on San Jose to throw in that total. You're going to take the over three and a half in that last game. I am completely with you. The Habs, they are, the Habs are always live dogs. The heart of this team, John, I completely agree with you. That team is fighting for their head coach, they're fighting for their pride out there. Looking at the Tampa Bay Lightning, taking on the San Jose Sharks. Yeah, the Sharks have mailed it in. Blackwood will be in goal tonight. Now, this will be his first time back since February 27th versus the New Jersey Devils when he got injured. So we'll see how Blackwood comes back. But we know Mackenzie Blackwood had like one really elite game this season and the rest. He's allowed those beach balls to come in. Coming back from injury, I expect the Tampa Bay Lightning's offense to really capitalize on a goaltender that hasn't been out on the ice very much. Now, Andre Vasilevsky, it's Andre Vasilevsky, but when you start to really look at his numbers, he hasn't been too strong. So he's allowed three or more goals in 11 of his past 13 starts out there. Should we fade Vasilevsky? Uh, I can't get there, but I don't blame people who would. He's got an 885 save percentage and a 3.42 goals against average in those last 13 starts. So not phenomenal numbers. We know the San Jose Sharks have mailed it in. So I wouldn't go there. The Tampa Bay Lightning got the shutout win last time they played back in October 6-0, to and I could more see this game finishing that way than I could Andre Veselowski having a bad game. The Sharks did win the three pro or the Sharks three games prior. They were able to cover the puck line, so they did play in tight games. Two of those meetings went to overtime. Are the Sharks barking? I keep going back and forth. I can't, I can't see it, you guys. I can't rationalize taking the Sharks. And you guys know I love, I absolutely love a home dog. And sometimes I look at the lines and I'm just like, sign me up at plus two ninety. Can't get there with this one, but if the Sharks can pull it off. They're plus two ninety. Almost a $4 favorite here in the Lightning at minus 375. Total six and a half at minus 118 to the over. Minus 104 to the under. I am going to circle Kucherov here for the Tampa Bay Lightning. I think this is the best bet of the whole the whole night. Looking at Kucherov for the anytime goalies coming in at minus 110. Kucherov for his points tonight, three plus points. Seems like a lot to ask. But it doesn't. He's facing the San Jose Sharks and Mackenzie Blackwood returning from injury. Kucherov, three plus points coming in up plus 235. Could Kucherov get a hat trick? He absolutely could. Kucherov has a total of 118 points. Guess who he overtook last night with his four points? He overtook, or yeah, when they faced Vegas just a couple nights ago. He overtook Nathan McKinnon. He's sitting one point above Nathan McKinnon 
for the most points on the season. Nathan McKinnon has 117. Again, Nikita Kucherov coming in here at 118 points. That's comprised of 41 goals and 77 assists. Give me Kucherov for the anytime goal at minus 110. Give me Kucherov for the three plus points at plus 235. I think he goes absolutely off tonight. I'll probably sprinkle on that hat trick. This team is going to want to see him continue to rack up those points. That heart trophy, you guys, you look at teams and how they decide the heart. The heart is decided on. A player like Kucherov that has been so pivotal for this team to get to where they're getting to um, in the season, it's Kucherov here, absolutely. So I think Kucherov's have every opportunity to win the heart, especially with how he's playing. And you look at the Sharks, in their last 10 games, they've given up 44 goals, so that's an average of 4.4 goals per game. If you just want to look at the Lightning's team total, it's too highly juiced. So. You can take it. They're giving you a three and a half. They're going to make you pay almost $2 for the over three and a half. The goal in the first five minutes here, I do see being able to cash. That's coming in at plus 156. The offense here of the Tampa Bay Lightning comes at you in waves, and they have every opportunity to score quickly. The over one and a half is coming in at minus 144. And the Lightning first period puck line coming in minus at half a goal at minus 108. I think all of those are going to be nice games um, that cash. And when we look at the Sharks, and I know they've been able to pull off upsets. We've seen that happen for them. They've gone 2-12 and 12 in games where they've been a dog of plus 295 or more. So situations like today where they've been this big of a dog, they've been able to pull off that upset only two of the 12. I just don't see it happening in this one. Late night special, double gamer. It's going to be, it's going to be a great game. Yeah, the Tampa Bay Lightning should put up four or five goals on their own. The books are going to make you pay for that team total as well. Let's go, Ducks. I tell you, I need the Ducks to win. BYU already busted one of my brackets out there. So frustrating, you guys. Let me know what teams you're score or cheering for right now. That's the question. Can the Sharks score? Andre Veselowski hasn't been phenomenal. So if you think the Sharks can get that goal on him, I just don't know who it would be. And let's look at some of these odds for goal scorers on the Sharks and see if anything jumps off. You're going to have to go, yeah, I can't get there. I really can't get there for anyone on the Sharks. Looking at it, I wouldn't recommend taking anyone. Kucherov minus 110, Braden Point at plus 105, Stamkos at plus 140, Brandon Hagel at plus 185. Anthony Dunclair, you could get him at plus 230. Anthony Dunclair. Um, is returning to take on the Sharks, right? Dunclair was with the San Jose Sharks, correct? I'm making sure I'm correct on this because that is something that I had not looked at before. No, Dunclair. Yeah, he was with the San Jose Sharks, Dunclair. We're going to look at Dunclair tonight for the anytime goal. He's facing his old team. He's coming back home. I can't believe I didn't have that circled. Anthony Dunclair, plus 230 for the anytime goal. Let's look at his points. Anthony Dunclair for the power play point. Dunclair for power play points coming in at plus 500. Every opportunity to hit that, I believe he rides on the second power play out there. I would rather take him for two plus points versus his older team than the point or then the power play Dunclair for two plus points at plus 230 Anthony Dunclair is 100% going on my bets right after this so ooh, I like that point parlay that is definitely a good point parlay out there let us know what that play pays for you okay you guys that is all of the 11 games I have to run Wish you guys all the best out there on the ice tonight as well in March. Madness, don't let those teams burst your bubbles. So your brackets burst your bubbles, burst your brackets. It's going to be a long night out there, but you guys, best of luck in everything. We'll talk to you tomorrow.